to a city where 24 million footprints daily cover a relatively small patch of turf. After an explosive decade of commerce, this has become the center of the world's economy, one of the planet's most expensive cities, yet also a city which worships ancient values and traditions. Capital of a land of uncommon beauty and uncommon culture. Among a handful of common interests, one is boxing. And we are live inside Korakuen Stadium in Tokyo, Japan, as HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. Tonight, undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson's 10th title defense against the challenger James Buster Douglas. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. And a look around inside this soft-ceiling, air-suspended dome, not unlike the Carrier Dome in Syracuse or the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. In this configuration for boxing, it will seat 63,000 people. There's some debate as to how many tickets have actually been sold, but as you can see, there are many empty seats. By no means a sellout, attendance may be as low as 30,000 or less. But in ultra-prosperous Tokyo, all of the ringside seats at $1,000 apiece have long been sold. And hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. We at HBO welcome you and the world of big-time boxing back to Japan to test the theory that ticket buyers on foreign shores will purchase what Americans seem increasingly unwilling to shell out for, apparent mismatches for Mike Tyson in defense of his heavyweight crown. With me again now is our HBO boxing expert, ring legend Sugar Ray Leonard. And Ray, we assume that it becomes increasingly difficult for Mike Tyson to prepare for boxing matches that most of us see as non-competitive. You spent a couple of hours with the champion two days ago. What was his mood? I tell you, Jim, it's a very interesting setting because traditionally Mike would have a number of people around him. But this particular time, this particular fight rather, he's had about a handful of people there. And the reason being, I think Mike Tyson's aware that he's always under the microscope. His performances, whether they go one round, two rounds, they're highly criticized. So he needs to be by himself in a much more subdued and relaxed atmosphere. And that's what he has now. And of course, the man we like to have with us when we get ready to call one of these championship fights, HBO boxing analyst, the well-versed Larry Merchant. Larry, what are we about to see? Another 90-second annihilation of an ill-prepared opponent? Well, in the important game of expectations, this fight is over before it begins or soon thereafter. You have to remember that uh, just nobody believes anybody can compete with Mike Tyson. In fact, Ed Schuyler of the Associated Press, when he arrived in Tokyo, was asked by a customs official what he was doing here. He said he was here to cover the Tyson-Douglas fight. How long do you expect to work? The customs official asked. Oh, he said, about 90 seconds. The good news is that Douglas has fought his best fighters against the best fighters he's fought, so perhaps we'll get a few rounds. Uh, also, Jim, uh, Douglas has a dog, a beagle named Shakespeare, and I believe that any prize fighter with a dog named Shakespeare can't be all bad. Buster Douglas tells us that his favorite Shakespearean play is the romantic tragedy Romeo and Juliet. Surely if Mike Tyson were asked that question, he would choose something more bloody and violent, perhaps Henry V or Macbeth. Here now, a look inside the violent boxing mind of the heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson lives in a Darwinian arena. Strength survives. For the casual observer, his edge. And now we are live once again in Korakuen Stadium in Tokyo, Japan, where coming up, you are about to see Mike Tyson's 10th defense of his undisputed heavyweight championship, about scheduled for 12 rounds, against today's challenger, James Buster Douglas of Columbus, Ohio. Briefly now, let's take a quick look at some of the ways in which Mike Tyson has occupied himself during this month-long visit to Tokyo scenes here from some of the things that Mike did on those few occasions when he was outside the giant new Otani Hotel. He didn't go out much, spent most of his time sitting in his hotel suite, indulging in his well-known passion for martial arts videotapes. Should be pointed out that Tyson's mood on this trip was much different than that of a couple of years ago when he came here as a 21-year-old newlywed with his wife Robin and immersed himself much more fully in discovery of Japanese culture and customs. 
Some of the Japanese observers might have been a little surprised at the skill with which the champion clutched and tossed the pigeon here. Maybe they didn't know the well-known story to American boxing fans of how pigeon tending was the primary hobby in Tyson's painful and difficult youth. The dream of becoming heavyweight champion is frozen into the icicles on Buster Douglas's face as he runs forward through the streets of his hometown, Columbus, Ohio. Douglas runs not away from his past, but toward his date with destiny. James Buster Douglas's past is a proud one. His father, Bill Douglas, was an excellent light heavyweight who fought several champions in his time. After he retired, Bill devoted his efforts to training his son, James. I was at birth, you know, introduced to boxing. I had a burning desire to want to fight. I used to, you know, harp on my father about taking me to the gym because he ran that gym. And, you know, he, he kept me off for as long as he could and eventually he just took me in. And I went in there and, and, and liked it. As an amateur, Buster enjoyed immediate success and he turned professional at 21. His early career was marked by striking success and discouraging failure. James Ellis that was then isn't the same James Ellis as now. My determination level is, is a phenomenal compared to how it was then because I felt as though, you know, there was a lot of things that distracted me and I let distract me. But now, you know, it's, I have a total focus on what I want to do. The man who is paid to sustain Douglas's concentration is his manager, John Johnson. Johnson learned his techniques as an assistant to one of the most demanding disciplinarians, the late Ohio State football coach, Woody Hayes. I love John, really. You know, John is a, a true, true man. You know, if, if you got John in your corner, man, you know, you got a good man in your corner, and I do. And, you know, we're not only business associates, we're friends. That friendship is but one reason Douglas remains in his childhood hometown of Columbus. This city is where all of Buster's stories begin, and he takes refuge before a big fight in the places which resonate in his memory. Like his father before him, Buster brings his son, Lamar, to the gym where it all began. The first time I ever started boxing, put on a pair of glasses in here. Marvin, focus point, Marvin Plaza. See, this is when we first started. My first pro fight, my grandfather promoted the show, and everybody was seated on the steps here. Then they had a few chairs close by the ring, but most of those were for the boxing commissions. And, but it was just seating everywhere. Everybody was just seated all around, back all up into there. Six years later, Buster met Tony Tucker for the IBF heavyweight title. He lost the fight, and his longtime trainer as well. After a series of disagreements, Bill Douglas was expelled. The Douglas family was shattered. Buster's business started from scratch. We were all in living room, and John pulled out this paper plate and said, well, at this point, this is what we have. What's on the plate? And on the plate was nothing. And he said, but this can turn out to be a tremendous ordeal if we all put our full effort together. Buster has since gone on a six-fight win streak. And even if some of those victories have been less than Tyson-esque, he has beaten enough of the right people to be ranked number two by the IBF. But 23 days ago, a cruel blow disturbed his training. Buster's mother, Lula, died suddenly at age 46. She meant a great deal to me, and I'm going to miss her tremendously. But, uh, you know, it's got to go on. People now say Douglas has less chance than ever to win this fight. It's easy to be negative. I mean, it's easy to give up, say, to, you know, to hell with it. But to be positive and be strong and, and have the faith, it takes a lot, you know. And, and I think that by becoming a heavyweight champion, that I would be able to, you know, show the, the youth here uh, that, you know, it's possible to fulfill your dreams. Tonight, Buster Douglas attempts to live out his dream, a dream which sons of boxers everywhere have shared in common, to be called undisputed heavyweight champion of the world.
And as if the death of his mother were not enough, in recent days, Buster Douglas has learned of yet another misfortune for one close to him. The mother of his 11-year-old son has been found to be afflicted by a severe kidney ailment, which people in the Douglas camp say could eventually threaten her life as well. You've heard the references to Mike Tyson's reign of terror. Here now some statistics which demonstrate the degree to which he has dominated the heavyweight division since becoming champion. 52 rounds in title fights, an average of only 5.2 rounds per title fight for the moment. That is the best figure in the history of heavyweight champions. And his career knockout percentage ranks behind only that of former champion George Foreman, the Foreman record of 65-2 and two with 61 knockouts, including his 19 knockouts in 20 fights during the most recent comeback. This crowd is quite unusual in comparison to American boxing audiences, and this is not unusual for Japanese Ladies sports events. When you hear the silence in the arena, the ring, it has nothing to do with any ceremony or any moment of condolence. It is simply the way Buster Japanese greet occasions Douglas. like this. I got you, I got you. Okay. Now we strain for a look at 29-year-old Buster Douglas as he emerges from his dressing room where we are told he has spent most of the last hour resting quietly. His last fight, a 10-round decision over Oliver McCall, was on the undercard of Tyson's 93-second conquest of Carl the Truth Williams in Atlantic City. You see his rankings, number two for the IBF, number three for the WBC, and number four for the WBA. As a footnote, the number one ranked heavyweight contender in all three governing bodies' estimation is Evander Holyfield, who is here at ringside, and we expect to be talking live with him at the end of the bout. This is more animated than we usually see Buster Douglas, so he is obviously excited. But despite all of the woes that you outlined, Jim, he now has to go out and fight the most fearsome fighter on the planet. He will, however, go away with about a million dollars. And uh, that should uh, cap his professional career quite nicely. If he gives a good performance, even if he doesn't win, he would be in line for more money. So he has a lot of motivation. And there is the career record of Buster Douglas. 34 official fights. He did fight one bout, which was ruled a no contest. 19 knockouts among his 29 victories. And his uh, two best victories were over uh, fractional champions of champions for a few days, Greg Page and Trevor Burbick. A look at that weight progression. In his sixth pro fight back in 1981, he weighed 208. Two years later, he weighed 260. He was over 240 last July when he fought Oliver McCall. He enters here at 230 pounds, which would suggest that Buster's in pretty good shape. Well, I always mention to Buster Douglas that he, he doesn't have the discipline. He told me, this is the new Buster Douglas. And here is the familiar Mike Tyson rushing toward the ring wanting to, to get it on and get it over with. Flanked by the entourage, which, as Ray Leonard pointed out, is dwindling in size from fight to fight. Mike has turned this phase of a fight his favorite phase. He calls it like going out on a date. It's finally going to happen. Of course, his idea of a date is wham, bam, thank you, sir. <laughs> The man closer to Tyson, or to the screen, just inside of Tyson, on screen right there, is Jay Bright, one of the two listed co-trainers. 
Not in sight in this picture is Aaron Snowell, the other co-trainer. They, of course, the men who inherited the role of training Tyson when Kevin Rooney was expelled from the Tyson camp. 37 wins, 33 knockouts, only one decision in a title fight. And that was the 12-rounder with Tony Tucker. Well, check it. It was also a 12-round decision over Bone Crusher Smith in a title fight. We have with us a presentation by the World Boxing Association of a Joe Lewis heavyweight super belt given to Mike Tyson on behalf of his many successful defenses of the heavyweight crown. On behalf of the WBA, we have the Japan Boxing Commission Chief Commissioner Makoto Hosaka to present the Joe Lewis super belt. Mike Tyson doesn't really care about this ceremony in which a Japanese official wants to hand him some local belt. This picture right here is really one of the more exciting of one of the more exciting moments in all of sports today. Just watching uh, this athlete waiting to get it on. He's like a, a combination of a Pavarotti clearing his throat and a bomb ready to go off. This is the worst part because waiting, you want to get the fight on. You don't want to wait around for the ceremony. You just want to get into the ring and then start to fight. Tyson has managed to completely ignore the entreaties of Japanese officials in the ring who want him to participate in this belt ceremony. He wants to do the belting right now. And it's always tougher on the challenger because he has to wait. We're told that Mike was, as is often his custom, pounding the wall in his dressing room with his fists Ladies in the half hour prior to his departure to come out to the ring. That was the case before his four round knockout of Larry Holmes. It was the case before his 91 second destruction of Michael Spinks. Now up to the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. for pre-fight introductions. We welcome you as Take Hand Boxing Promotions in association with Don King Productions brings you the main event, 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing the promoters, Mr. Akihiko Honda and promoter extraordinaire, Don Only in America King. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Council in conjunction with the Japan Boxing Commission. Representing the WBA President, Gilberto Mendoza. The Vice President and Supervisor, Dr. Manuel Virgilio Aispurua. And the Chairman of the World Championship Committee is Dr. Elias Cordova. Representing the WBC, we have the President, Jose Suleiman, the Supervisor, Elias Ganem. Representing the Japan Boxing Commission, the Chief Commissioner, Makoto Hosaka. Introducing to you the officials as they are appointed, the ringside physician, Dr. Kei Suzuki. Timekeeper at the bell, Richi Hirano. The judges, Larry Rosadia, Ken Morita, and Masakazu Uchida. Now presenting to you the referee in charge of this main event, Octavio Meran. Tale of the tape, you heard Mike Tyson say before the fight that he's always at a physical disadvantage against his opponents, and here it is again, height, weight, and reach, all in Buster Douglas's favor. But Tyson, once again, is in great shape at 220 and a half pounds. Rules for the fight, the one significant rule, and it is unusual, the three knockdown rule is in effect here. Again, Jimmy Lennon. His record, 29 wins, 4 defeats, 1 loss, 1 draw, with 19 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked number 3 by the WBC, number 4 contender in the WBA. Please welcome the challenger, James Buster Douglas. And his opponent, the defending champion on my left, really needing no introduction the world over. 
He's ready to fight out of the red corner and attired in black trunks. Hailing from Catskill, New York, he weighed in at a ready 220 and one half pounds. His outstanding record, 37 wins, no defeats, with 33 big wins by way of knockout. He's making his 10th defense of the heavyweight crown, introducing the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the one and only Iron Mike Tyson! Give me a break, please. Gentlemen, remember the dressing room instruction. Shake hands and good luck both. Everybody out. Douglas insists that he's going to shock the world in this fight. If he should upset Mike Tyson, it would make the shocks in Eastern Europe seem like local ward politics. He would shock most of the world if he could make it into the middle rounds. Well, he has convinced Mike Tyson this very first round. Buster Douglas is a conventional fighter who likes to work behind a stiff left jab. I'm surprised he busts him moving so well. I mean, he's really, I think the weight has made a difference in his upper body movement, in his legs. Keep that jab out there. He wants to tie Mike up every time Mike gets inside. And the problem a lot of fighters make is the fact they dropped that right hand of theirs and Mike Tyson's left hook is no cupcake. Keep in mind that Carl Williams looked pretty loose and relaxed against Tyson until Tyson hit him with a body punch about 45 seconds into the bout. Mike has not yet gone to the body against Douglas here. Well, the left jab of Buster Douglas is incredible because he's one of the few guys I've seen other than Larry Holmes and maybe a couple, a handful of guys that can put a guy down with the left jab. So the left jab is a key weapon for Buster Douglas. He fought a sculpted Adonis named Mike Williams on the undercard of Tyson Spinks and floored him twice in the early rounds with the left jab. Hey, hey, hey. Both heads. We're almost 90 seconds in, and as yet, Tyson has done no real damage to Buster Douglas. Douglas punching on the break, and he gets a warning from Octavio Meran. Now Tyson begins to step in behind the left jab. He landed twice. Watch the right hand of Buster Douglas, but the problem I'm still seeing is the fact he steadily he still drops that right hand as he throws it. Through a snappy looking right hand lead. And then tied up and on rushing Tyson. See, Mike has to be careful also because Mike's standing in front of him too. Couple of right hands by Douglas. Tyson landing the jab again, and Mike misses with the right. With total fighters, Mike has to really work extra hard to get inside. And see, this is to bust hey, Douglas' advantage. Okay. Left jab lands again for Tyson. He has not yet gone to the body. Against Frank Bruno, Tyson basically forgot Bruno's ribcage for the first four rounds and paid a bit of a price for it. Once he went to the body in round five, the fight was over pretty quickly. She does not allow Mike to work his body. He's trying to tie him up inside. In fact, he's doing a pretty good job here. Another right hand lead by Douglas, and Tyson lands the left hook. That was a good round for Douglas, and I gave it to him. Probably the best round I've ever seen him fight.
対します青コーナー挑戦者ジェームス・ダグラスアメリカオハイオ州コロンバスの出身1960年4月に生まれて、ジェームス・ダグラスの出身1960年4月に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、戦績3年後に生まれて、That was a very docile round for Mike Tyson, throwing only 13 punches. But a number, a number of jabs, excuse me, but a number of fighters have had good first rounds against Tyson, and that was it. Let's see if Douglas can sustain it, Jim. Keep in mind that Tyson, a little more than three weeks ago, was knocked down in training by Greg Page. And there was some talk here that he was not as sharp as he has been for previous bouts. You never know until he's in the ring. Every time that Mike comes inside, apparently uh, Doug has been doing a lot of watching of films because he takes a move, he steps to his right, give a little angle. Douglas giving as good as he gets inside right there. He outlanded Tyson by punch stat computations, 22 punches to eight. A very hard right hand by Douglas inside that Tyson walked right into. And right through, I might add. Left hook by Tyson was partially blocked by the right glove of Buster Douglas. We talked about intimidation before the fight. Douglas has so far shown no signs of being intimidated. See, what, what they want from Tyson's corner, they want to see more upper body movement and also more punches thrown as opposed to the one big punch. And that's what Mike Tyson's doing now. Douglas. Another right hand lead lands for Douglas. Douglas not afraid. That is apparent. And what's happening, Douglas started to get his punches off first, which is the key to boxing. You get your punches off first. He's got pretty quick hands for a big man. Well, the lighter Douglas is, the faster his hands are, the more accurate his punches are. Not a lot of power. As Larry referred to when he talked about Tyson walking right through the solid right. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I think Tyson has a pretty good chin and he's compact. And what's happening, every time Douglas throws a shot, in fact, it was a good body shot by Mike Tyson. First good body shot he's thrown. Tyson keeps that chin tucked in. As you watch Buster Douglas try to tie Mike Tyson up inside, remember that fighters such as James Tillis and Mitch Green and Bone Crusher Smith have thoroughly frustrated Tyson at times with just that tactic. What I'm seeing now is the fact that Douglas is getting Mike Tyson to reach in. When you reach in, that's what Another happens. good right hand and a good right uppercut and two more good rights by Douglas. I don't think I've ever seen Tyson absorb that kind of a four or five punch combination before in his professional career. Now, Mike is not going on, he's not attacking Buster Douglas, which indicates that there is some respect here. And also, and also a little puzzlement, Ray. He just doesn't seem to know how to go about it. That's another good round that I gave to Buster Douglas. I don't think there's any doubt about that one. Just like you on the pads, relax, calm. Get inside. Don't lay back, man. Remember, you're really the pressure. You're moving your head to get in there. Just now let's take a look at that combination. Douglas firing away. That right was high. Came back with a nice short left, a left jab. Came up with a right and a left that missed. And there he comes back, still punching. Ordinarily, in that kind of situation, Ray, Tyson likes to duck, let the other man fire and finish, and then come back with his punch. And, and what Douglas did so cleverly was to smother him and not give him a chance to throw back. Well, that's why I'm surprised about that. Mike has not retaliated after his opponent throws his combination. And listen to these numbers, guys. By punch stat computations, in the first two rounds, Buster Douglas landed 52 punches, Mike Tyson, 16. Well, I don't know if he's going to shock the world, but, he sh but Douglas has shocked me so far. <laughs> Mike Tyson now is really furious now. He's really, really rushing this man coming in, but they may fall in the hands of Buster Douglas. 
Good left to the body by Tyson. That's the kind of blow which has done a lot of damage to previous challenges. You hear his corner, Tyson's corner saying, be smart, work your way in. Another good right, but Tyson comes right through it. Douglas still outlanding Tyson, out throwing it. Okay, okay. Again, Jim, the, the yellow from Tyson's corner to work All your right. way in, not to walk in there because that jeopardizes you, put you in a lot of trouble. Douglas hey, hey, hey. accurate with the jab. Miran told him, telling him not to hold and hit. No, 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 no. Now what Douglas can't do, he can't allow himself to get frustrated and try to exchange with Tyson. That could be fatal. I'm surprised I don't see as many body shots thrown by Mike Tyson. That would bring those hands down of Buster Douglas. Right hand by Tyson moving in. Left and a right by Douglas. Tyson seems a little more precise in this round as he tries to move in, but it is still Douglas who is throwing and landing more often. Working behind the jab as is his custom. Those right hand leads have been very effective. They have been, but also you gotta get those hands back up. What's Douglas doing? He's not allowed Mike to get his punches off to the midsection. Although there was a right hand to the rib cage there. Again, the yellow from Tyson's corner combination, not one punch. And that's why Doug is able to get his combinations off because he's only expecting a one punch retaliation. Tyson's trying to leap in behind the left hook. He landed that one under Douglas's chin, near the middle of the chest. Douglas with another right hand to the top of Tyson's head. Again, Tyson's corner yelling, you've got to punch inside. Good solid left jab by Douglas. Tyson grazed him with the right. Six four one inside. Don't just stand there and look at You're not closing the You're not closing the gap, Mike. You got to get inside by jabbing and moving your head. When you get in the inside, you got to punch. All right, come on, Mike. Punch, Mike. Jab, jab, jab. Overhand, right. Come back into your foot. Okay? Relax. Oh, you're too flat footed in there. Alright. Okay? Get Trust in what you know. Do it. Let it go. <coughs> Don't be so cautious with the punches. Let them go. This is the first time since Kevin Rooney hasn't been with Mike Tyson that he's needed some answers from the corner. Let's see if he's got the right answers. They're trying to make him just fight, not look to just wing big punches, expecting Douglas to fall the first time he lands something. And the man who does most of the talking in Tyson's corner and who leans forward to whisper in his ear is Aaron Snow. If you watch what Douglas is doing now, he's trying to double that jab up. And see, the second jab is not really hard, but it blinds you for a fraction of a second. That's when you drop the right hand. And you notice Douglas is trying to throw not just one jab, but two jabs. There was an expression on Tyson's face, and uh, I can relate to that, because sometimes you get into the ring, Jeff, you just don't have it. Things just don't click in. And maybe that's what he's feeling now. He's just not on. Well, we're in round four, and a lot of ringside observers didn't expect the fight to go this far. It should be pointed out that stamina has been a problem for Buster Douglas throughout his career. And in the last two weeks, he's been bothered by respiratory illness here. Was taking penicillin just this past week and antihistamines. You have to wonder how far he can go at this level of effectiveness. Doug 
Atlas still landing the jab and then stepping away. Tyson seems less aggressive than is normally the case. Perhaps a little frustrated. Well, Buster Douglas definitely is inspired because of the tragedy, the passing of his mother. And reminds me of when Howard Davis' mother passed during the 1976 Olympics. It really motivated him because he was doing it for mom. Everyone in Douglas's camp said that would be the case today. It was extremely close to his mother. Right hand by Douglas right on Tyson's chin. The double jabs, especially with a big man, is difficult to penetrate. Always difficult to penetrate. Critics of Tyson say that since the departure of Kevin Rooney, he has been increasingly easy to hit. There's very little head movement here today. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's a natural fighter. You don't think that the loss of Rooney as trainer has made any difference? I don't really believe that. But one thing about it, I guess that must you know, be a little contradictory, but normally to keep the same family, it's always a plus. But then, then again, sometimes you must change. As you did. Yes. Good enough to Douglas by Douglas. again with a left and a right. And now Tyson lands a right hand and backs Buster up, but here he comes. Michael, when Michael is punched, Mike is dropping his hands, which is very dangerous. Well, if Mike Tyson who loves pigeons, was looking for a pigeon in this fight, he hasn't found him. you got to use that seven to get inside, Mike, to back this guy up, and you got to move that head. All right? Get that rhythm. And, if, and there, of course, is Amanda Holyfield, who has a guarantee of $12 million to fight Mike Tyson in June. And right now, that $12 million isn't in the bank. Okay. Come on, you all four rounds. You, you got to hold your concentration. Now you're good. You have to come back. Everything will be there. Everything will be there. You work at Douglas, people. Tell Douglas he's won all four rounds. And shockingly, I agree with them. Trainer J.D. McCauley and manager John Johnson very calm in the Douglas corner. He's thrown 114 jabs in the bout, and by punch stat computations, he has landed almost half of them. Extremely effective working behind the left jab, Buster Douglas. Now Tyson lands a jab. This is the round in which Tyson turned things around against Frank Bruno. Right hand by Douglas lands again. He's been very quick with it. No, 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 no. Douglas get the breathing here. Very smart. Very, very smart. He throws his combination. Then he ties him up. There's just no head movement there, Ray. Mike is a stationary target for this guy. Well, that's the uh, that's the reason his corner is so petrified because they see that Mike has become some of a stationary target. Directly in front of Buster Douglas. That's why the right hand's been hit later. Okay. Now this, this is totally uncharacteristic of Mike Tyson. He's right there in front of his opponent. Not doing anything. Just reaching in. There's our right hand again. This one happens every time. The Another right hand, and now Tyson seems to be wobbled. Mike is not throwing back. Buster Douglas is completely dominating this round with jabs and right crosses. But what's going to do some damage now? Buster Douglas throw a double cut. Tyson leaps inside with a left hook. One punch at a time, though. That's all he's throwing. There's the uppercut. Absolutely, the opening is there. Buster no Douglas is so relaxed, and this should save him in the later rounds if he should go that far. No, 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 no. It appears, Ray, that James Douglas is fighting a master fight in the geometry of the fight. Every time that Tyson appears ready to throw, he either ties him up like he just does, or he just backs off a little bit and ruins his timing. Thus, thus far, he's fought the perfect fight because he's not being a stationary target, although he's not really uh, running around. There's a lot of swelling above Mike Tyson's left eye, and it is partially closed. 
And that is from the right-hand leads that Buster Douglas has landed almost at will throughout the fight. That left jab of Buster Douglas is a measuring stick. Very strong. Once you come out, Anthony drops the right hand. Well, I think you'd have to say this is the most trouble Mike Tyson has ever been in at this stage of a title defense. This is the most trouble Jimmy's ever been at any stage of a title defense. My mic doesn't get hit by leave right hand. That's another round for Buster Douglas. And he even dominated the exchange after the bell. You remember at the top of the show, I said the good news is Buster Douglas always fights his best against the best opponents. This is even better news than that from his point of view. And he has swelled up Mike Tyson's eye and is dominating the fight right now. Now just watch this combination. A long right, a left jab hook somewhere in there. And he has been doing this over and over. Every time Tyson wants it, is willing, takes a punch and wants to fire back. Douglas fires back before he can. You begin to file through your memory for the biggest upsets in heavyweight championship fight history. I, I don't think there would be anything like this. I agree. This would create a new standard of upsets if this went on. Clay and Braddock, not as big as this. Question is, the stamina of uh, Douglas, as you've pointed out, stamina has never been a problem for Mike Tyson opponents in the past. <laughs> and I would question the stamina of Buster Douglas at this kind of pace, Larry, but again, he is so relaxed in there. By punch stat computations in the fifth round, Buster Douglas outlanded Mike Tyson three to one, 33 punches to 11. If anything, his dominance is increasing. Again, the leadoff rights, I'm very surprised they are landing like they are. Tyson landed an uppercut inside. And another right hand uppercut by Tyson. Douglas doesn't appear hurt. Well, as long as Douglas stay there, He's, he's going to play right to Mike Tyson's hands. But the thing about all of this, uh, Jim and Ray, is, is that he's never given Tyson a chance to use those amazingly fast combinations. Even when he gets hit, it one punch and he smothers him, or he fires back. The combination which destroyed Bruno and which has been so effective against a lot of opponents is the right hand to the body, followed immediately by the uppercut. And that punch lands when a guy is against the ropes or in a corner. And Douglas has not been there. Tyson finally blocked the right hand lead. Little more peekaboo defense from Tyson now as he is clearly aware of the closing left eye. And that becomes a factor, especially for the very first time. Experience plays a major role in that kind of handicap. One of the things that is his great mentor, Cus D'Amato, used to tell him was, it's no virtue to get hit, keep your gloves up. And, and Mike Tyson, in recent fights, which have been so easy for him, has forgotten that advice and has kept his hands down. Now you see, he's so worried that he's gone back to what was called the peekaboo style of defense. He's got his gloves back up again. What I don't see is the upper body movement from Tyson, and that's why Douglas is able to land those kind of punches. No head movement. Tyson winging inside with a left and a right. Douglas again ties him up. Lead off right once again. Mike needs to pick the tempo of the fight up. He has to make Douglas work. So far, he has not done that. Douglas not quite as quick and active in this round as he has been in previous rounds, but there's very little drop off. And the champion looks frustrated. Missed with the leaping left. A confident Douglas goes back to his corner. Well ahead on points, you have to assume. I gave that round to Tyson, the first one I have. You're still laying on the outside on this guy. You gotta back this guy up, right? You gotta go to his body. Once you get inside, you gotta punch, Mike. You definitely got a punch when you get in there, all right? When you get inside, don't look the hole. Use your right. hands. Set down your knees. You got your two punches. Grease, grease, grease. Grease, grease. 
Just the right hand. Come on, what is she do now, baby? Stay alert. It's your fight. Uh, your show. You understand me? Grease, baby. You got it one. Just stay in control. You stay alert. Stay control. This fucking guy's scared to death. That jab. Keep push your shit on him. That jab is a shot, baby. The jab, jab right here. Yeah. Huh? 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 Past the midway point of the scheduled 12 rounds. Few at ringside thought that Buster Douglas would make it this far. He has made it this far with a so far dominant showing over heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. If this fight was being held in the States, the crowd would be in an uproar right now. Here they are eerily silent. Douglas continues to outland Tyson at close quarters and then to tie him up. It has made an enormous difference in the talent of Buster Douglas by sharing off those pounds. He's so much quicker, he's so much agile, and he's so much accurate now. Buster needs to move a little bit more. He's standing, he's start, now he's starting to become stationary. Ray, Ray. Low blow by Tyson. Miran was behind Douglas and didn't see it. Douglas with another right hand, looping over the top. It's a great tempo for Douglas. Notice his hands are down. Tyson still leaping and lunging behind the left hook, desperately trying to change the tempo of the fight. Another low blow. This time, Mayron saw it. Another right hand lead for Douglas, partially connected. Left jabs right on Tyson's face. This is the first time I've seen a big man in the ring with Tyson use his physical attributes to height and reach advantage. Tyson's corner liked what it saw with the left uppercut. It was almost 25 years ago when a 7 to 1 betting underdog named Cassius Clay thoroughly frustrated and whipped a sunny Liston in Miami Beach at a time when Liston was regarded as invincible. You have to go back that far to find something this shocking in a heavyweight title fight. No combinations about Mike Tyson. Gotta throw combinations, right? I hate you know, All right, you're down. You're down. You're down. You're down. Don't relax. Grease. Double your jab Grease. every time it comes to you. And the right hand's only going to travel. Beautiful work, Chad. Beautiful work. Keep busting Stay strong. On my Keep Stay strong, Buster. Stay alert. Okay. Everything else is in your ballpark. Okay. Now, this is an event that happened in training. It was dismissed. Tyson has been down before in training. Nobody takes it too seriously. But there, as you saw, Greg Page step in with a right hand and Tyson go down. In fairness, I don't know how you can relate it to what happened here, except that Mike Tyson is anything but the Dyna, the dynamo, this dynamic terror that we're used to seeing. Buster Douglas has neutralized him, frustrated him, beaten him to the punch. By punch count statistics, Tyson is averaging only 23 punches around. He's going to have to step up the activity if he's going to turn things around here. That knockdown in training took place just a little bit more than three weeks ago. 
everybody from Don King on down in Tyson's camp said it was no play acting, it was for real. Off this performance, I think you'd have to say yes, it was definitely for real. The graphic you saw between rounds demonstrated the huge disparity in jab effectiveness. Buster Douglas thoroughly dominant in that department so far. Another solid straight left jab right to the middle of Mike Tyson's face. I'm watching the legs of Buster Douglas. There's a lot of spring into his legs, which means there's a lot of life to his legs. We're in the eighth round, folks. A heavyweight champion regarded as completely invincible in these circumstances is in big trouble. Could you imagine Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? Well, he's not over yet, Jim, but I tell you, he's put a good account of himself up. It boggles the mind. Well, he, he's asking some questions of Tyson that Tyson hasn't been asked before. In the second half of a fight, he's got to come back and win it. Look at the punches. These right hand leads are not diminishing in effectiveness, guys. He is still landing just about all of them. Double jabs, lead off right hands. And now he's on the back mic up. No, no, no. Hitting on the break. Miran didn't say a word to him about it. There's a little swelling under the left eye now of Mike Tyson. Still beating Tyson to the punch, Ray. Well, there's just no question which is the more confident fighter now. You see how easily Douglas is dominating the action inside. And Tyson is holding on. I've never, never seen this happen before with Mike Tyson. He's always been the initiator. Here he's against the ropes. I've never seen. And there's a right hand uppercut and down goes Douglas. As suddenly as that. Can he beat the count? He got a little overconfident. Got a little loosey-goosey. Still wobbly. Let's see what Mike can do to finish. And the bell ends to save Buster Douglas at the end of round eight. Well, Tyson needed something like that desperately and like a real champion. He came through with it. It was though he baited Douglas in. I thought he was out of it. Let's take a look. Tyson is backing up. Now, perhaps he's trying to bait him to come in and to relax because that was the effect of it. Came off the ropes with that terrific right uppercut. What a shot. Shades of Frank Bruno. Let's see if what Douglas has when he comes out for this round. Second down. Second down. Round nine. He's had 60 seconds to recover. Clearly he was out. Three solid shots right on Tyson's face. Just missed with the uppercut on the break. And there goes Tyson inside and up and under again. Solid right cross. Douglas wobbled again. Neither man playing much defense at this moment. They are just trading shots, and now both men look a little weary. Now, if I was Douglas, I would move now. No, just no, move no, around. No. Just try to clear ahead, clear those cobwebs. Tyson misses with the right over the top. And Mike no, has no, slowed no. down. Step back. Step back. Maybe a tiny bit arm weary. No, Buster. No, Mike. Step back. This is high drama, and the crowd here is greeting it by and large with stony silence. Probably disbelief, Jim. They came to see Godzilla. Both fighters weary from the pitched battle. 
Mike Tyson was on the verge of going down. And again, the champion wobbles back to the ropes. Solid right hand by Douglas. The most action-filled, heavy-punching exchange round of Mike Tyson's career. And Mike Tyson is hurt, his eye is closing, and he is behind in this fight. Just an incredible surge of, of strength and life in Buster Douglas. Let's take a look. Two lefts and just Mike Buster Douglas is just going at him. And what he's doing is what other fighters who have had Tyson in trouble have backed off to admire their work. And when he got him in trouble, he went at him. And Tyson has taken some big punches. James Douglas is not a great puncher, but, with, but he's a 230-pound man throwing some hard stuff. And Tyson, to his credit, has stood in there and took, taken the punches. Oh, what a right hand by Tyson to begin the 10th round. Emphasis on man, Larry. This has been an inspired, courageous performance by a man whose mother has died within the past month, whose son's mother is battling a difficult kidney ailment, who had every reason to come into this bout depressed and downtrodden, chosen by no one to have a chance of getting out of the first few rounds, and he has thoroughly dominated Mike Tyson with the exception of the moment when he went down. Well, the other day, John Johnson's uh, Douglas' manager and Douglas himself said, I am a new person now, and apparently he is. He's been a whole different person than the one every boxing expert expected to see here. It, it appears that Tyson is virtually a one-eyed fighter at this point. This makes Cinderella look like a sad story, what Buster Douglas has done here tonight. Let's go ahead and call it the biggest upset in the history of heavyweight championship fights. Say it now, gentlemen. James Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I would be willing to say it's the greatest upset in boxing history. There seems to be a little pandemonium here. In Las Vegas, they wouldn't even put up any odds. Perceived as this giant monolith has been reduced to being another heavyweight champion who got defeated. And you heard Aaron Snowell saying to Tyson, who apparently was unaware, you were counted out. K.O. This victory for Buster Douglas could not have been more richly deserved. Well, Douglas did well. A lot of guys have done, a few guys have done in the past. They've hurt Tyson and didn't take advantage of it. Buster Douglas is spot. It wasn't just the power of the punches, but it was the accuracy and the number of punches that Buster Douglas threw. Sustained accuracy all through the bout. For 10 straight rounds, he was sharper and crisper and more accurate than the champion. If it weren't so impossible to believe that Buster Douglas would knock out Mike Tyson, you might have begun to say in the middle rounds that it was nearly inevitable as Tyson's eye closed and as he began to wobble in the inside exchanges. But nevertheless, given the history of the champion, you continued to wait and wait for the moment when he would, with sudden fierceness, be able to turn things around. And he did knock Douglas down with an uppercut at the end of round eight. But Douglas came back to outclass Tyson in face-to-face -face exchanges throughout round nine. And then in the 10th, he took over once again. 
and finish Tyson with the combination you saw. That was a turning point, Jim, when he was knocked down in the eighth round, Douglas was, and he came back strong in the ninth round. A heart as big as Japan's economic power. 23 seconds in round number 10. The winner by way of knockout and new heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas. Larry Merchant is with the new champion. Larry, if you can hear me, take it away. It's all yours. All right, I'm with Buster Douglas. Buster, Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, it's happening. Oh, take this out. Take this off. Why did it happen, James? Because I wanted it. Why? Why did you win this fight that nobody on mother. the planet gave you? Mother. mother. In what mother. way? God bless her heart. Let him go, Larry. After he got knocked down, I let said, you can't let, let him go. be. You want to go, James? Oh, no, 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 let him talk. No, 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 are you saying, I mean, you came out here more animated than we've ever seen you, more focused than we've ever seen you, and you're crediting it to the fact that the death of your mother just what? Focused your mind what? <laughs> I was already focused, you know. Well, what surprised you from the get-go? What did you? What were you going to try to do from the get-go? That's what I did. Whoop his ass, you know. I mean, you come to fight, I come to fight. I told you in the, in the room. I said that it was time for James Jones to come out out of the closet. But it seems you had. But you know, I told you that I also had times where I had great fights that would come back with two or three different fights that was mediocre, you know, and I would leave a lot of doubt. I don't blame you guys. You guys go on what you see. You understand? But I know, and my people know, that he what the real playing. James Douglas is all about. Every every challenge here for Mike Tyson says the same thing. But you did something in there. I told to, you. I told to you to neutralize him. Why my nose? Why my nose? Thank you, Jesus. Just one moment, Buster. I told you in the room, I said, but you they weren't James Douglas. But you didn't let him get off. It seemed every time he wanted to throw a punch, either you beat him to it or you smothered him. Was that the idea? Well, I just did what I did, you know. I went out there and fought my fight. All right, now. Yeah, very instinctive, very instinctive. All right, now you had him, but you get knocked down at the well, end. Well, yeah, you know, and that, that was a good shot. I mean, you know, like I said before, a man over 200 pounds has a good shot. Did, he, did you get careless? Did you think you I think had so. Him? That was just starting to get real relaxed, you know, and I got I got shook. I mean, well, I got hurt, hit, and I came back, you know, sucked it up. Because I knew I had him also. You know, I knew he was, every time he would try to get off, I would come back, you know, and, and offset him by beating him to his punch. You know, because Mike, well, early, early in the fight, you know, Mike would come out, you know, and throw his big shots. You know, so what I would do is just, you know, go go with him and come back with my own. You know, and another thing, I was very relaxed. I wasn't afraid of the man. I feared no man, because I believe in God. That's the only man I fear. You know, thank God. I give this praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, but, you, but, you, but you know, you know that you're in there with Mike Tyson. After the knockdown, did you think he would come on, or did you know you had to stop his momentum at that point? Well, yeah, I knew he was going to come because he's a champion. I mean, he was going to suck it up and come and give me, you know? And, and 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 I was ready for it. I was aware. I was aware of everything. You know, I was totally aware of everything. And Dad, this one is for you. I love you. Well, could you see the confusion in his eyes? You, you, one of his well, eyes I was see, closed. Well, I seen that early on. You know, because of the stiff jab. You know, I was just letting him run into the jab because you know, his speed. I have I have tremendous speed. I have tremendous tre tremendous ability. As I told you earlier in the uh, room, I said, well, you know, I'm conditioned to go 12 rounds, and that's what I was conditioned for. That's why I was able to get up from the knockdown. You know, it was a good shot. You know, I, I give him all respect for that. You know, but when I got up, it was like, well, it's time to go ahead and get him out of there. You hit him with Because I got careless. I got careless, Larry. You know, I started, you know, getting in control of everything. And then all of a sudden, he caught me with a good shot. You took some fearsome, he took some fearsome punches. This is a dream, Larry. This is truly a dream. I swear to God. This is a dream. Hey, where's the 
truly a dream, man. This is a dream, man. Put the belt on. Put it on. This is truly a dream, man. I watched you on HBO a thousand times putting belts on, guys, or you know, interviewing guys, and I said one day it's gonna be me. One day it's gonna be me, and thank God that it was me today. You, you, I swear you, to God. you hit him with some fearsome punches. I hit him some great shots, man. Early, and he Larry, didn't go. I, well, yeah. Well, that's all. Well, that's great. That's great because you understand. Like my dad said, you know, you hit him with shots. Let him take it. Like, oh, okay. You want to take a shot? Guy. Yeah, be a tough guy. Just keep chopping on him. Just keep chopping on him. And eventually he's going to go. And that's what happened. As you seen over there, he was flat on his ass. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I think that tells the whole story, Jim. Mike Tyson, flat on his whatever you want to call it. Jim. Rodney, I love you, Rodney. James Buster Douglas, 29 years old, Columbus, Ohio undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Well, if you're a sports fan, you know you've seen it dozens of times. How many times has a story so sentimental, so poignant, so emotionally powerful, seemed to simply take over reality and tell itself? Surely, the sentimentalist in all of us wanted to believe that in the wake of the death of his mother, amid the difficulties being suffered by the mother of his child, James Buster Douglas could step forth today with a performance unlike any other in his entire career and compete with Mike Tyson. Surely the realist in all of us said no, that wasn't really possible. But indeed it was possible, and it happened. And an inspired Buster Douglas thoroughly dominated Mike Tyson and courageously came back from an eighth round knockdown to turn around and knock the champion out himself. Larry Merchant, it has to be one of the greatest and most memorable moments in the history of the sport. Well, it certainly is. Uh, I wish it had been in the state after all this, but it seemed to be so casual about it. But for whatever human reason possible, for someone to surpass his own, his own ability to surpass uh, anything that he can ever do before in this moment, at this moment, um, that's what makes this sport uh, so terrific.